Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Heather here. Today I want to talk with you a little bit about colon cancer, uh, particularly a uh, common bacteria that tends to be associated with um, at least or around 71% of um, colon cancer incidences. And that bacteria is called Streptococcus gallolyticus. And you don't have to remember that name, but it's um, you keep in mind that it's a form of pathogenic strep bacteria that um, the research isn't quite sure yet if the cancer causes that bacteria or if the bacteria um, more so contributes to the cancer. In my experience, an overgrowth of streptococcus, pathogenic streptococcus in the digestive tract actually sets the stage for um, colon cancer and colon cancer incidences and um, almost all of the individuals who do the GI map testing uh, with me, the DNA stool test, um, and they have colon cancer, have high levels of streptococcus and um, streptococcus gallolyticus. So, um, so if you're someone with colon cancer, um, think about any time in your life um, where you may have had a strep throat or cloggy ears or a really bad cold, um, some forms of um, lung congestion and uh, can involve streptococcus. And um, so if you think about any of these uh, times in your life where you may have had um, some sort of strep uh, infection, strep throat, tonsillitis, you know, these sort of things, and then you've taken antibiotics, um, Usually when that happens, the antibiotic will never um, kill all of the pathogen. Um, and so what happens is also when you take those antibiotics, it doesn't um, actually kill um, you know, much of the pathogen that we would like it to. What happens is, is that it actually presses the pathogen down further into the body. And this is because antibiotics um, they're anti bio they're anti-life, so um, they kill all the good bacteria, and that bad bacteria is actually able to be pressed down into your body, and you know, one of the deepest parts is our gut, so it gets pressed down into the gut and um, resides there, and then um, 20, 30, 40 years later, um, you may have an experience of colon cancer or another cancer um, due to this, um, especially if you've done a lot of antibiotics or a lot of medications uh, that tend to just um, press the, the disorder or the um, infection that you're fighting, it presses it down further into your body. So um, when it comes to colon cancer, this strep strain is uh, prominent in as many as 71% of the cases and um, it can be rectified. Um, I use my radionics practice to help rectify and you know, remove that strain from the colon and from the body. And um, so when it comes to you know, removing these pathogens from your gut, it's really important to do so um, before taking your probiotics so that your probiotics have room to take up residence and to grow and to form new colonies in your gut. Because if those pathogens are in there, they're going to just kick out the beneficial bacteria because um, they're kind of ruling the roost until you know they can move on because um, they're going to dominate um, the gut. It's, it's all about competition in the gut um, between the good bacteria and pathogenic bacteria and parasites. And so really removing these pathogens um, with radionics um, and you know herbs and these sort of things can be super helpful when it comes to getting to the root of um, your experience with colon cancer. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, not in all cases of colon cancer, but in some cases of colon cancer, the streptococcus strains are really high and the beneficial E. coli strains tend to be super low. And these two kind of um, work with each other. When one's high, the other one's low, and one's, you know, and vice versa. So um, often when it comes to colon cancer, there can be this really high level of strep 
and sometimes there can be this really low level of beneficial E. coli. And that's really important to keep in mind that there are forms of beneficial E. coli that are extremely important to our health and well-being. Beneficial E. coli does not act in the way that pathogenic E. coli works um, that we're all familiar with, you know, diarrhea, chills, fever, sometimes vomiting. Um, you know that experience when you've come in contact with E. coli if you're someone who has. I know I have before and um, it can be an intense experience. So that's not how the beneficial E. coli works. Beneficial E. coli uh, is very health promoting to your system and um, it's very important for our sleep wake cycles as it's um, involved in creating melatonin and serotonin and um, the other neurotransmitters that are very important for um, not only sleep-wake cycles but your mood, um, how you're feeling, your state of being, uh, these sort of things. Um, and that beneficial E. coli is also um, a really big determining factor as to the quality of sleep that you're getting. So typically when E. coli levels are low and that strep level is high, sleep can be impaired, meaning there's insomnia, uh, maybe you wake frequently, and uh, maybe you just have had trouble sleeping for years. Typically, um, not in all cases, but in many cases, it's because those beneficial E. coli strains aren't adequate enough to help um, promote that adequate sleep and healthy restful sleep and so we know that one of the side effects with people who have cancer um, is poor quality sleep um, trouble sleeping insomnia can fall asleep but wake up super you know early these sort of things and so um, really when it comes to cancer colorectal cancer uh, but all cancers in general, finding out what's in your gut can be extremely helpful because if there's pathogens in there, uh, many of those are fueling the cancer that you're specifically experiencing. And when it comes to colorectal cancer, um, that strep strain is often, um, very often involved and the E. coli tends to be low as well. And removing that strep and while taking a, um, a very, very specific um, probiotic that helps to boost beneficial E. coli levels can be absolutely helpful to getting to the root of colon cancer, helping to rectify it, helping to prevent reoccurrence. And um, so these are just some things that you may want to look into if you have an experience with colon cancer or cancer in general to see what's in your gut so you can rectify that and remove those pathogens. So um, when it comes to cancer, um, it's really important to have that immune system intact and strong and robust. And we all know, and the research is showing, that over 80% of the immune system is located in the gut. The lymph system, the lymph, uh, all line the gut. And um, there's so many uh, immune cells and immune system happenings that occur in the gut, in the gut lining, in that wall of the gut. And if there's pathogens in your gut, um, if you have leaky gut, if there's a lot of parasites, then your immune system is going to be constantly trying to fight those things off 24 seven, just giving their energy to those things versus helping your body to remove cancer cells and induce apoptosis and um, be able to give your body the enzymes that it needs in order to heal and to remove cancer cells. So all of these things can be super beneficial along one's journey with cancer. And um, it can go really well, especially with a gut rebuilding diet. Um, you know, as you remove those pathogens, you're eating a gut rebuilding diet that's keto friendly and um, you know, removing those pathogens that are in your gut. I just can't emphasize how important and helpful that can be. So if you're someone out there with colon cancer, it may be worth exploring that DNA stool test, uh, the GI map 
through me and getting those results, interpreting them, and then coming up with a very proactive game plan that will help get to the root of why you may have experienced colon cancer um, from the first place. So um, I hope this was insightful along your journey with cancer and your healing journey. If you have questions, please feel free to post below. Um, and if you want to learn more about digestion and the DNA stool test, you can visit me over at ancestraldigestion.com. Thanks everyone.